Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Today we're doing some biohacking. Previous in the uh, previous video earlier in the week, I pierced the sanctity of the temple of my soul with this Dexcom. It is a glucose monitor. It goes interstitially into your adipose tissue to measure, I guess, lymphatic fluid, some sort of fluid, and it gets a reading. You got to calibrate it. In the previous video, it's a whole deal. It was uncomfortable for me to say the least but mainly because I'm a bit of a I've been steadfast in my fast the first day is always the toughest but you have a little salt in the palm of your hand and some water and I like my espresso like I like my ladies hot bitter black and all up in my face so I don't got to worry about having any cream or sugar or ruining the fast that way and this fine morning there was no rain baby doll drug me out to the mountain we met up with some friends and ground up to the top of the mountain and whizzed on down, took about two hours and it was difficult, but luckily we got towed up by my type A friend who happens to be a very good cyclist and Italian. He's, you know, he's one of those fellas, just, he's like a res dog, nothing but ribs and asshole. He just towed us right up that hill. I was working hard and not for no reason because I wanted to bonk my blood sugar to get switched over to ketosis. And I don't think I'm there yet. I don't have any kind of alkaline breath or any kind of acetone breath. I think I'm still running on glycogen stores in my liver. I've been practicing fasting for long enough now that I'm getting good at it. And I think my body has a set point where it likes to be for sugar and it just, it just does its thing. Now, when you first start fasting, or rather, when I started fasting, you get the shakes and it sucks and it's horrible, but it gets easier and easier. And I think what that is, is overshoot in, well, undershoot rather, in your blood sugar, where you're used to getting a constant drip of, say, Mountain Dew. We would get a much more interesting result if and I had installated one of these prior to cutting weight and getting a little fitter, also not eating any garbage at all. Everything's pretty much homemade or a sit-down meal. I don't go to the raunchy rons anymore. I don't bring my kids there. If you think about it and you zoom out and you smell that smell, it doesn't smell like food. It smells like a chemical plant. Day the third of this, the Nickelback diet, we'll all stay skinny because we just won't eat. Speaking of a Chad Kruger fella, actually not a bad fella. I never met him myself, but my buddy's a plumber and I plumbed up his house. <laughs> Blazed a monster coner first thing in the morning, the old wake and bake, and then ended up laying under his house for half the shift looking at a pipe. <laughs> not a bad fella at all, he says. So... This G6 sensor got a hell of a lot of drift. So I pulled in a favor from a dear friend of mine whose expertise this happens to be, and I prefer not to do that, you know. Hey doc, you, would you look at this rash for me on the sly? Just, I would prefer to wither away and die. She had a look at my numbers and, and they didn't quite make sense. So we were coming up with all kinds of theses why my blood sugar would be quite normal despite being fasting. And she suggested to me that I go and get some keto sticks. I says, I'm fasting, I can't eat. Not hickory sticks, you dullard. Keto sticks, nicht für Essen. What you do is you whiz on these and they'll tell you how much uh, ketosis you're into. I peed on them and sure enough, I was mid-range here between Moyen and Fort. So I'm obviously in ketosis. Now, are those two systems parallel, the glucogenesis and the gluconeogenesis? The glucogenesis is after your liver has run out of glycogen to put into your bloodstream. It starts to actually create glycogen from this huge acidifying complex. It's insane the amount of steps it takes to get to glycogen, but your liver does that happily as long as it's fit or reasonably fit. So I was thinking that maybe something in my background, that is 
my father uh, in utero was starved by the fucking Nazis. So maybe there was some sort of generational trauma that helped me out and coming up with all kinds of half-assed schemes. Turns out the sensor's wrong. Bit of a piss cutter here makes it unusable for fasting because it will not accept my calibration of 2.6. I keep putting it in and it just ignores it, but it doesn't tell you it, it, it's ignoring it. I concede that there might be some PID, some smoothing algorithm in here, so just you don't get these crazy noise spikes or s some filtering. However, I would like to be able to calibrate it. It's asking me to calibrate on the daily, and yet it's not accepting the calibration. I've done the old Gil Bates blue screen of death alt control delete. Still not chooching. So there's no point in wearing a sensor, but it doesn't work. I'm pulling it off and I notice in the adhesive we get a little bit of blood there or some lymphatic fluid with some heme. So I might have been giving her a little tough on her. I am not an easy man on equipment. Shocking, you know. I'm just trying to get the adhesive up and not rip a bear patch in my belly fur. Not that I'm a hairy bastard, but I'm a hairy bastard. Son of a bitch, that hurts. Oh, that is good adhesive. Fuck me. Ew. <laughs> There's a little probe there. We'll have a teardown of this. See how she chooses. Maybe get this from Shenzhen for two bucks instead of 300. Cut out the middleman. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice.